Hey guys, today on So Craftastic, I am going to be creating some wood burning art. And in addition to the process of the burned lines, I'm going to be adding color with jelly gouache paint. I've chosen this wood canvas, and for old time's sake, I'm going to be using this little wood burning tool. But next time I will be whipping out the professional big guy, so stay tuned for that. It's pretty big, can't wait. This is the art that I wanna transfer over to my wooden canvas. I have this piece of tissue paper that I'm going to use as tracing paper. I think I can see through it just enough. What is this? I forgot to tell you guys, I have a kitten now. Surprise! Excuse me, miss. She just sniffed the tissue paper. <laughs> Bless you. I will properly introduce my sweet little girl in the next video, but for now, any guesses on what her name is? Leave a comment below. It does actually start with an M, but it's not Miss. That's your hint. These scissors are really pretty to look at, but I think they may need to be sharpened because this wasn't a very smooth cutting experience. It was fine though, whatever, let's move on. I cut out the stick with the heart as one piece and the flame as a separate piece. The canvas that I chose is actually a little bit smaller than the piece that I already have painted. So when I trace these pieces on, I'm going to eliminate a little bit of the stick, make it shorter so the flame doesn't go off the top of the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this piece down first with some washi tape. Oh, that did not stick well. There we go. <laughs> this piece is not working. Also, did you notice that the washi tape is misprinted? Then I'm gonna go ahead and trace around it with a pencil. And I am thoroughly regretting even trying to do the stick part of this. I think I'm gonna actually erase that part and use a ruler to make it straight because this is awful. I knew that I didn't cut the tissue paper straight, but I didn't think it was that bad. Moving on to the flame, I'm attaching this the same way. Not as many pieces of washi. I'm gonna see if I can do this without them. Maybe that will be a mistake, who knows, but I'm using a yellow colored pencil instead of a regular colored pencil because the top part of the flame is actually going to be painted in with multiple colors and I don't know if the gouache will go over the pencil lines well, so we don't want to chance that with a dark color. Now that the outline is complete, it is time to burn with my VersaTool wood burner. And we are going to just go over the main pencil lines. The heart is gonna be a lot of fun because I am going to texture it. Don't be fooled though, it's not actually burning this fast. Here we go. A small snippet of real-time footage, the rounded tip allowed me to achieve a dark burn without having to go back over the outline. To get a mid-tone brown inside, I eased up on the pressure and used a scumbling stroke. Scumbling is really fun, one of my favorite art term words also. Then I returned to my heavy-handedness to build up small clusters of darkness. It sounded a little ominous, but just these little dots here. For the actual stick of the matchstick, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to this thin pointy tip. As you can see, the burn is building color very gradually. It's pretty slow. In fact, this real-time clip that you're seeing on your screen right now is 10 seconds long. And I'd say I probably only darkened, I mean, maybe a couple centimeters at most. So the outline of the stick took over 30 minutes for sure. I'll come back to shade the stick and finish the texture of the heart later in the video, but for now, it's time to get into the jelly gouache portion. Don't even ask me why I tried to revive these paints with rubbing alcohol first. Oh no, this might take a little bit longer than I thought. I have no idea because it's a water-based paint and that was really smart of me, right? But I don't have any distilled water on hand, so I'm using regular water from the faucet 
to pour in now. So maybe it's a good thing I spritzed in that alcohol beforehand, just in case any mold were to try and grow later, you know? I let the container sit covered overnight and the next day, a fairly decent jelly consistency was restored to the paints. After some mixing, of course. At first, I like to thin the paint even more so it has a watercolor consistency when I end up brushing it onto the wood. This allows me to build up the opacity and make the flame appear more realistic, in my opinion anyway. And it is a lot easier to brush on in general. Jelly gouache is kind of sticky if you don't use it with added water. And sticky paint, as you can probably imagine, wouldn't blend very well. So this also makes blending colors much easier. Before I get to the next color, I have something exciting to show you. I used my Burning Heart matchstick design to create stickers and enamel pins. My very first enamel pins ever. I've been waiting so long to create these. Plus, I have even more designs too. So if you wanna see those, I posted a vinyl sticker unboxing video on my Da, 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 da. brand new YouTube channel, Sarah Lynn Studios. On that channel, I'll be sharing my journey of starting a small business. So please check it out if that's something you're interested in. Okay, now as I paint the light orange here, you're about to get an even bigger surprise. Wait for it. You see the little kitten head back there? I bet you weren't expecting it to match the flame. That's right, I have two kittens. Boop. His name is maybe slightly easier to guess than his sister's. Your hint is it starts with a P. What do you think it is? Now you know a few of the reasons as to why I took such a long break from YouTube. The final one isn't so exciting. I was quite sick this summer, but that's a topic for another video. I will say I am okay, so you don't have to worry or anything. I'm feeling a lot better, although I'm still not 100%. But hey, one day at a time, right? Despite the fact that not feeling well really sucks, like really sucks, there is a silver lining. I had massive amounts of time to sit and really think. Think about the direction I wanna take my YouTube channel, the style of art I wanna create, the alternate revenue streams I wanna try my hand at, I have the option to do anything I truly put my mind to. And for whatever reason, I feel very drawn to working with wood. Maybe you can tell by this group shot of pieces I've been creating over the past few months. It's not like it's a new discovery, the medium I mean of wood. I've dabbled with plenty of things like this in the past, but I'm really excited getting back to it lately. With that being said, I will link all my wood burning and painting on wood videos in the description box and the iCard if you're interested in seeing the other pieces I've created over the years. I wholeheartedly, no pun intended, feel a strong connection to the artwork I've been bringing to life lately. So you can absolutely bet to see more stuff like this from me in the near future. This piece actually means something to me. They all do. And I hope you gain something positive from watching and seeing these pieces too. Maybe it'll inspire you to create something beautiful or allow you to process some sort of intense feelings you're having in life. Remember in darkness, our light burns bright. Our true colors shine through. Not a single person in this entire world can fully extinguish your inner flame, no matter how broken you may feel. You always have a little tiny spark that is just waiting to ignite into something huge. Thank you for coming to my inspirational TED talk. Seriously though, I mean every single word that I said. When I put a video out in the world, I wanted to mean something. I wanted to help someone. I spent about another hour shading with the wood burner and adding the finishing details to the textured heart. This of course helped the image come alive, but it wouldn't have been complete without another layer of black background paint. It looked very splotchy, unfinished and I want to even that out and make it look darker. Now that the background is a pitch black void, I'm evening out all the edges of the canvas as well. This way the piece could be displayed on a wall without a frame and still look put together. Finally, I'm going in with some finishing details to soften the outlines of the flame. Jelly gouache has some properties of watercolor paint, so when I re-wet it, I'm able to blend more, which is great, However, there's also a con to this aspect. Any area that got painted on top of the black acrylic, which is a very small part, it tends to lift away and leave this little gap of darkness. 
I don't like it. So I thought a little bit and I decided to remedy this issue by layering on top of everything with Prismacolor colored pencils instead of trying to suffer through very slowly and build up the gouache paint because I just didn't think it would get the opacity that I wanted and the blend that I wanted without too much of a headache. Thankfully, the colored pencil worked really well and I was actually even able to get a better blend with the color gradient. So overall, I am very happy with the way the piece turned out in the end, and here it is. So I thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you have a great rest of the day. Bye.